Australia is the driest inhabited continent on Earth, essentially a thin strip of fertile land on the edge of a giant desert. So the last thing we need is population growth. Yet this is exactly what's being forced upon us due to the highest immigration rate in the developed world. It's trashing our living standards, especially in southern Sydney. It's the root cause of unaffordable housing, overdevelopment, locals missing out on jobs to foreigners, increasing traffic congestion and pollution, rising homelessness and overcrowded schools, hospitals and public transport. Our permanent immigration intake has almost tripled in the past 25 years. From 2013 to 18, the annual cap was set at an absurd 190,000. In the past eight years, we have given permanent residency to nearly 1.5 million people. That's more than the population of Adelaide, and these figures don't even include our refugee intake. We also have a bogus temporary visa program, with many uncapped visa categories that are easy for people to renew and stay here for many years. This is the case with our farcical student visa category. There were nearly 600,000 in September 2018. We also allow unrestricted living and working rights for New Zealanders and are even handing out visas to elderly parents of migrants. All up, we have over 2.3 million people on these pseudo temporary visas and the numbers are rapidly increasing. So with all this going on, it's no surprise that we are now suffering the ramifications from governments flooding us with all these people. Young locals are being priced out of the neighbourhoods they grew up in by overseas buyers and recent arrivals, mostly from China. This is where the demand is coming from for all these high-rise units going up in suburbs like Sutherland, Kirawee, Ingadeen and Janali. It's not to cater to us, we don't even want this. And student visa holders and other recent arrivals are cramming into overcrowded accommodation, allowing landlords to overcharge, meaning rents have also skyrocketed with no end in sight. No wonder homelessness is rising, even in the Shire. Locals are missing out on jobs to migrants, especially student visa holders, because employers want easy access to a desperate, compliant foreign workforce who will accept lower wages and conditions. Our roads are clogged, parking is a nightmare, hospital waiting lists are blowing out, houses with trees and backyards are being replaced with concrete and unit blocks, rivers and beaches are becoming more polluted, and we are having to rely on desalinated water and imported food because we don't have enough fresh water and arable land to support this many people. All this is happening because of corporate and political elites who use mass immigration to boost their profits and brag about GDP growth via an ever-increasing consumer base. Ethnic constituents also want lax immigration laws to allow their families to move here. And of course, governments love using multicultural immigration as a way to dilute the voice of local people. It makes us easier to control when electorates become dominated by compliant, uninformed migrants who won't criticise or protest and who are accustomed to third world living standards. It doesn't have to be like this. My policies will help to get us back on track to restoring our quality of life. You can view them in full on my website, votematbryan.com, but here's a few to get you started. We need to lower immigration to 40,000 a year. We need to end the trans-Tasman travel arrangement with New Zealand. We need to eliminate all temporary visas unless the foreigner is studying or working. We need to cap student visas at 50,000 per year and ban them from working. We need to ban foreign buyers from buying any type of real estate. We need to abolish negative gearing, first home buyer grants, interest-only home loans, and the 50% capital gains tax discount. We need to reduce the corporate tax rate for industries that don't rely on mass immigration. There should be no more free trade agreements that get signed, and we need to renegotiate the existing ones to remove the provisions for migrant workers. There should be no more privatising of public hospitals. There should be higher payroll tax for foreign employees. We need harsher penalties for any type of tax avoidance, with increased staff numbers at the ATO for punishing employers not declaring their full earnings or paying staff below the minimum wage. All Australians should be legally entitled to work tax-free on farms. Immigrants who move to Australia as adults should never be allowed to vote in elections or hold political office. Political donations need to be capped at $50,000 per year per party or independent and $500 per donor and we need to ban all political donations from non-citizens and majority foreign-owned companies. A vote for the major parties is a vote for more mass immigration and the problems that come with it. 
They have no population policy, no plan, and will continue relying on a flawed economic model based on flooding a dry, inhospitable continent with more people, with locals not prioritised for jobs, real estate and access to government services, and with no consideration given to the adverse effects on our quality of life. It's unsustainable, immoral, and your kids or your grandkids are the ones who will suffer. Our goal should be to increase our quality of life whilst maintaining a stable population, where we prioritise our own people before anyone else and where greed does not dictate government policy. This is what I'll be fighting for. If you think this makes more sense than aimlessly marching on the path towards a big Australia, then vote for me, Matt Bryan, on May 18. Thanks for watching.